you know, I come from a working class family. My mother and father weren't well educated. Um, um, I was second generation, I guess, uh, it Italian American, um, and uh, there were they, there was no tradition of reading in the house, no books. Um, of course, I read in school, etc., books in school, and that sort of thing. But there, it was more of a visual tradition. More, uh, if uh, I was taken to movie theaters a lot. Uh, also, being a sickly child uh, with a very severe asthma, I couldn't play sports. So again, the movie theater, movie theater in the church, the church in the movie theater. And so, along with the films, uh, there was also the advent of television, 1948-49, and the heyday of really the best, some of the best programming in American television, in the history of uh, American television up to this point with the 50s, 1950s. And so I saw a lot of uh, television shows, but also uh, films on television. Uh, being working class family too, they didn't have enough money to go to the theater. So theater wasn't an option. Um, live stage shows. So it was mainly, mainly, uh, um, visual literacy what was, was what was happening at, at that time to me. I did not understand that that was happening. What it made me realize was that there was an intelligence, another kind of intelligence, that was trying to tell a story through where the director, the writer, and the cinematographer, where they were focusing your eyes. You know, whether it was a, the camera may be on an extremely low angle looking up at you. Um, uh, the use of the lens, the size of the lens, I began to understand certain lenses did, did interpreted the story differently. Uh, a longer lens crushed everything together and made it flat. A wider lens stretched everything and some don't distorted it, especially if camera movement. I learned looking at certain pictures, particularly Wells' films and, and William Wyler too, a wide angle lens. Now, the Wyler, Wyler used his wide angle lens in a very strong, steady image. But Wells used that wide-angle lens, 18 millimeter, it turns out, uh, and, uh, very often, to move along the walls, move along. Uh, and you really felt, I felt, as if the camera was flying, as if the story was flying by, you know. Um, I didn't know why until I kept seeing the films again and again. And as I began to know a little more about what filmmaking was like and what cameras did, and, uh, and that's, I still didn't know who made the pictures, you know. Uh, but I was beginning to understand that, um, uh, there are certain um, certain tools you use, and those tools uh, become part of a vocabulary that's just as valid as that vocabulary that, that is used in literature, in our language. One has to begin to, I think, reach younger people at an earlier age for them to, to um, shape their minds to, to, in a critical way a critical way of looking at these images and what they mean and how to interpret imagery. Um, and I think um, in a more official way, I think, uh, than, than uh, uh, just punching up on a computer or uh, seeing something on a, uh, a TV commercial or something like that. I think, it really, I think you really need to know, you need to know how ideas and emotions are expressed through a visual form. Now, that, vo that form could be video, you know, or film, it probably eventually would be digital video for a long period, for a long time to come. But it still has the same rules, and it still has the same vocabulary, and it still has the same uh, uh, grammar, I should say, really the same grammar. And the grammar is panning left and right, tracking in or out, you know, booming up and down, uh, intercutting a certain way, the use of a close-up as opposed to a medium shot, what is a medium shot, what is a long shot, all these sort of things, and how do you use all these elements and the different kinds of lighting, and how you use all these elements to, to make an emotional and psychological point to an audience. And I think we have to begin to teach our, our younger people how to use this very powerful tool, because we know film, the image, can be so strong, for, 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 for not only for good, for good use, but also for bad use. Look at World War II, and look at the films that were made in Germany. Look at the, the great uh, director, Lenny Riefenstahl, look at her triumph of the will and how that, how that really, um, the extraordinary uh, uh, ability she had as a filmmaker, how that helped shape the policies of the Third Reich. And of course, we know what that led to. And uh, so film is very powerful. Images are very powerful, I should say. And we have to start to begin to teach younger people how to use them and what they, and at least to begin to understand, to interpret them.
I think it is good if a young person wants to express themselves and take a, a video camera and go out, they're going to find that they have to frame the image. And in framing the image, they're going to find that, that they have to interpret what they want to say to an audience. Now, how do you point the audience's eye to look where you want them to look and to get the point, the emotional and psychological point that you want to get across to them? They're going to have to make that decision. The real making of the filmmakers when they look to that viewfinder to tell the story. And I don't mean just telling a story, man goes, you know, man, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. No, I mean, a story could be the, uh, the story, a story could be uh, uh, rain uh, hitting a, a, a tree, leaves. That could be your story. You know, how? Where do you begin to put the camera? Then let them see what they do. Then, you know, I mean, yes, there's a curiosity in children and young people. They may try one or two and then they realize it's not for me and they move on. But there might be those one or two that realize that if I put the camera under this leaf, and I see this drop of rain coming at, you know, I get it in such a way, and if I wait for a certain hour in which the sun is glistening, at that, you know, who knows? May not be a filmmaker, may be a great painter. <laughs> but you'll find, you'll find that they will learn. They will learn as they do it. At the same time, at the same time, the respect for the, for the language of cinema itself, the history should be taught, and the visual literacy should be taught, because there are others who are not going to be able to do that there are others who can't afford to get a camera. And this is one of the things, my, where I came from, we couldn't afford any 8mm cameras or anything like that. I drew pictures. I, I imagined that they moved, but I drew them. You know, violence is, 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 an, all, is, is an encompassing word. It, it, it's, it's a word that takes in so much. Um, it depends on the world you're depicting. It depends on the audience you're aiming for. And then there's the issue of your responsibility to the story and to the world that you're depicting. And if you're going to go on a realistic basis, let's say, where a world I came from, um, uh, although it was good, hardworking uh, people trying to, trying to, trying to uh, raise a family respectably, there was a lot of organized crime. And I saw a lot of violence where I grew up. I just saw it. It was part of me. Um, uh, when it came time for me to make movies, I knew those films were not for children. That was a time before, that was, that was a time with the rating system, but it was before cable television. I knew those films would never be shown on television. And if they were, they'd be edited to the point where they were unintelligible and I couldn't care less because I wouldn't want them shown at 6 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night for a child of mine to see. The violence that I, that I have in my pictures, um, and again, you know, be self-criticized. People say, sure, you know. The kind of violence you do, you think is all right. But if anybody else does it, you're, you're, you're criticizing them. But what we're talking about, the violence in my films, is not pleasant. It's not pleasant. And I've just finished the film. Now I'm working on this film right now, which is very violent. And it's not pleasant at all. And uh, it's not, uh, it, you, you reap what you sow in the, in the stories I'm trying to tell. And I don't know any other way to show it. And, it, and, and there's also, to deal with the very, very dangerous aspect of um, that, uh, that adrenaline one has is young, that, that uh, could be, uh, uh, could be um, uh, expressed many different ways, uh, and, and <laughs> some sort of excitement, whether it's sexual excitement or violence or whatever. There's that, there's that danger that one has to know. That's part of what it is being human, especially young. And that could go wrong. And when it goes wrong, this could happen. Now, the world I came from, the world I knew, or aspects, I should say, of the world I knew, it was a valid form of expression. That's the world I'm, 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 uh, that's the world I'm, that's the human condition. That is the human condition, and it's tragic. And, and it's, it's set up in such a way that we'll, it will do us in as a species if we don't learn about it. I don't put it up there for people to enjoy it, you know? And if they are enjoying it, they catch themselves enjoying it, and the characters pay for it. I watched the characters pay for it, particularly in Goodfellas um, and in Raging Bull, and uh, Raging Bull in this film, the, the Departed, which we just finished also. Well, I think you have to make room for film and curriculum. I don't think it's time, and I don't, and this is a key thing. Uh, we don't mean to be having young, young people take two hours of their time or three hours of their time a week or however the curriculum works uh, to just sit and enjoy a movie. Um, uh, no, this is a learning experience. Uh, that also doesn't mean that you take a notebook and you write down everything in the notes as you're watching the film because you can't see the film. So what you're doing is training the eye and the heart of the student. 
to look at a film in a different way by asking questions and pointing to different different ideas, different concepts, uh, su suggestions. You're training them to think about a story that's told to you in visual terms in a different way and to take it seriously. I don't say it's a great film. You can learn more from even a bad film. You know, and so uh, this is why it's so important, I think, because so much in t of today's society is done visually and even subliminally for young people that it could be dangerous. And one has to know it's a very, very powerful tool.